Welcome to another episode of 30 Minutes with DailyStraits.com. Our guest today is Auckland-based entrepreneur Rebecca Perkaski, the co-director and co-founder of Better Packaging. Rebecca and her business partner Kate Bazaar started the company together in 2017 and in four years have grown the company from strength to strength. As a company, they were successful in being selected as the CEO venture back in 2019 and Rebecca has recently been made been named the South Asian, South Asia and Oceania sector winner for the Cartier Women's Initiative, in which she won a cool New Zealand dollars 137,000 prize money. She was also the first Kiwi to have won such an accomplishment. Her company, Better, Com- Better Packaging Co., is fast becoming New Zealand's most trusted source of sustainable packaging that services over 52 countries including Australia, the United States of America, Asia and the United Kingdom. Without further ado, let's invite Rebecca to the show and ask her uh, all that um, that's related to her business and how she made it a success. Hello Rebecca, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much for that. I hope I got your last name correct. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a tough start. one. It's Perkesky. So Perkesky. Um, you know, it's my life either spelling it or telling people how to pronounce it. All righty, all right. So um, thank you for that. Um, so let us dive right into the question. So, um, like I wanted to ask you, right, how you got here in the first place like how did you get to better packaging co so tell us how did you transition transition to the packaging industry from your previous uh, role from working as a program manager for various companies yeah look it's um it is quite funny because i never imagined that i would own a packaging company uh, in fact packaging has been a thing that i've always loved to loathe um, for, for many years and in an ideal world, you know, packaging companies as we know them wouldn't exist. And that's that's something that the Better Packaging Co is on a mission to do, is sort of transform the way we think about packaging. But look, we just set out to create a more sustainable career satchel. And I think in some ways we were quite naive about what was required to do that, uh, especially from a supply chain perspective. But I also think that's probably worked in our advantage because sometimes when you don't know what you don't know, you don't realise the work that's going to be involved. Uh, But I do think business is about problem solving. And in that respect, it's probably very similar to what I was doing as a project manager or a program manager. You know, every day you're just facing problems that you're working out how you get from this point in time to where you want to be in the coming months or years. And that problem solving goes across all parts of your business, whether it's your brand, your marketing, um, the logistics, the supply chain. And so I think for Kate and I, um, we're really great at that problem solving side of things. And we just had to learn really quickly on the job. Great. So, okay, you were at IBM and then you went for a maternity leave and then you didn't go back to IBM. You, you went and co-founded a company with your husband. It's called Starship IT. And that's when you got the idea to start better packaging uh, so just tell us uh, you know a snippet about that you know how did that happen was it planned that you were going to continue like stop working after maternity leave or you had the idea that you wanted to go back but then something happened in the way yeah look I've always known that I wanted to have my own business at some point in time and I had quite a you know an amazing career in technology and through consulting companies like IBM and HP and uh, that you know and I really enjoyed that and yeah you're correct so I did go on maternity leave and then my husband was starting his own company Starship it so I, I got to get involved in that because it was growing really quickly and he was really busy and I had you know I had the skill set and the capacity to help him out but and we actually at that company we looked at packaging and we were talking about packaging and I knew that I couldn't actually be involved in producing or bringing any more plastic into the world. And so I sort of said, look guys, I just can't be involved in that. And then at the same time, by this stage, my kids were quite a bit older and my daughter was at school and 
she was doing, she'd chosen to do a school project and she'd chosen uh, the topic, how to save the world, which is a pretty big topic for a little, I think she was six at the time. And, you know, she wrote up these really innocent ideas on how she could save the world. And it, it just broke my heart and it inspired me to, you know, take my love of sustainability or my passion for sustainability and try and do something different. So I, I wrote up a list of five things that I could do and make a career, a sustainable career satchel was first on that list. And I actually thought at the time that it would be a really quick, easy project, you know, six to 12 months that would get me some money to get the other ideas that I had going. Um, yeah, so that's, and, that, and then so we, uh, we went on a journey to try and find that career satchel. And yeah, four, four years later, and we've sold over 50 million bags to date, which is 50 million single-use plastic that's no longer in the environment. And it's a number we're really proud of. Well, very good. Um, I wanted to ask you a few questions about this. So you had any buffer money to... Yeah, look, we, so we bootstrapped it for the first 18 months, which if anyone's done that knows how stressful that can be. But the response was so phenomenal really early on. Um, you know, I've never really experienced anything quite like it. So we were, knew we were onto something. Uh, and, and so that, I think, helped with that risk associated when you're bootstrapping your own company. Uh, but as we knew it was getting so big and, and growing so fast, we decided that we would get investment because we wanted to do the product and the company justice. And so I think it was about two years and we got on our first round of investment and we've su subsequently had a second round as well. Oh, congratulations. So the first 18 months when you were bootstrapping, did you doubt yourself and thought, okay, maybe I should go back to part-time work or maybe, I don't well, know. I, I, I suppose I was in a really enviable, enviable position. Yeah, I, d I did think I should get a real job. But, um, and that I'd been working from home and then I'd been working in my husband's business. And so we, we weren't reliant on my salary. We'd got really used to me not having had a salary. Uh, but I think because the response was so phenomenal, there wasn't really that sense of doubt. Uh, we could never have imagined that it would have been as successful and as big as it has been. And so because it always exceeded our expectations, I think the room for doubt, there was just never any time to doubt it or you know, really question it. Because I asked this because both of you were doing business. So I'm sure he, your husband was also bootstrapping and you were bootstrapping. Mm. So you must have had a huge, um, you had a buffer, right? To tide you through? Uh, yeah, we, 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 we did have a little buffer. Yeah, for sure. But um, it was incredibly, it was incredibly stressful. Yeah, from the bootstrapping perspective. And I think because my husband had bootstrapped his company, I didn't really want to go through that again with this company. So 18 months and we made that call to get the investment and to, to do it in a different way. And so I've had the, I've been really lucky in that. I've had the opportunity to, to have a company, grow a company in both, sort of both ways um, and, and see how that, how that unfolds. All right. So tell me, uh, Rebecca, how did Kate get into the business? It looks like you started it and you were in it as a solo entrepreneur for some months and then she came in? No, look, I had the, I had the idea, but Kate came in right at the beginning and I'd always, so Kate and I had worked together previously and there's something really neat about when we work together and we kind of say that, you know, one and one quite often equals four for us, um, like the sum of the two parts are more. And so I'd always said to her, look, I'm, I'm definitely going to do something in the next 10 years or so and when I do that I'm gonna I want to do it with you because we've always just worked so well together and our values are really really well aligned um, and she'd had her own business in the past and so I'd be like no 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 I'm definitely not doing that but when I came up with this idea of a more sustainable career satchel and I presented it to her and said look and really you know you're the only person I can imagine doing this with I think because the idea was so compelling, um, it was a no-brainer for her. She joined the business with you um, at the start in 2017, in October, right? 
Yeah, look, we launched officially launched the business in March of 2018. But yeah, she was she was there right from the beginning. Um, it was just an idea, and and we both went out to find that sustainable career sector. All right. So you said to me earlier on that you met her in the coffee club, and also, so which was which was which? Now, did you meet her in the coffee club, or was it a work ex work colleague? Yeah, no, we we actually both moved to this gorgeous little island on in, um, off Auckland called Waiheke, and at around similar times, and our firstborn children are, I think they're only two months difference in age, and so we were at coffee club together and sort of got to know each other. And I had some work that I needed to do for Starship at around the brand and the design and everyone recommended that I work with Kay and so I got her on board there and that's when we really, really connected and got to know each other and you know we've got the same values and work ethic, uh, but we have really complementary skills, so I think that's incredibly beneficial when you're, you know, when you're partnering. All right, great. So um, this is a two, it looks like a two a person founder. So. This is usually they have it either a single founder or three founders because you know you'll have to take a vote if something is really and you yeah. need to decide on something. So now you have two two people. So how do you do you agree when someone agrees and the other person disagrees? How do you settle? Yeah, look, this is the question we get answered all the time, asked all the time, and we just have an arm wrestle, you know. Like, um... <laughs> Are you serious? Like really? No. <laughs> We um we do get asked it a lot and but it's really interesting. We actually very rarely disagree. And I think the thing is we I think like any relationship, any good relationship, when you respect and value someone, uh, then it's very easy, you know, easy to make things work. But the thing with Kate and I is that we're both yes people. And so if she has an idea or I have an idea, one of us is like, yeah, that's great, but this is how we can make it better, or this is how we'll blow it up. And so I think when people are saying yes to each other the whole time, like we are, if there is a no, you do listen and you take it seriously. Uh, and so for us, I think there's a lot more yeses than no's. And where we get to is if someone's really passionate about it and believes in that, then we just let that person run with it. Uh, but we have very few disagreements, I think, but the other side of it is the company is getting bigger now and we've got our very own area, very own distinct areas. We're having less and less to do with the day to day. And so we have these sort of overall strategic objectives and there's some things we come together with and we work on, but the majority of the time we just go off now and make that happen. And so there's becoming less and less room, I suppose, to, to disagree, not that we really ever have. So the investor that you got after two years, have they taken a chunk of the business and do they, are they a deciding factor now when you, when you want to make a decision, you, they have to come in as well? Yeah, no, they, they have taken a percentage of the business. So we're really lucky with our investors and in that we got impact investment uh, and they, uh, and they've got a perpetual fund. So the money that we make or generate from their investment will go back into a fund and a part of that agreement what you know we meet with them regularly and discuss what we're doing and have really healthy discussions um, and talk to them about the strategy but they don't make any defining uh, decisions at all that's that's for Kate and I to make but you know we've got we've got so much support through you know NZTE the CEO network the Cartier um, network as well and so we feel you know we love to lean on that and get the advice that we need when we need it all right so uh, rebecca you've gone like a rapid fire kind of an expansion from four years when you started with zero you're now in 52 countries which is really 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 amazing so tell us like you know the start i want to know how you got your first customer when the when the on the day you registered your company and then <laughs> What did yeah. you do first to actually outsource the materials? How did you find it? Was it overseas or is it all New Zealand based? Yeah, look, we did. We did a good, we had probably done by the time we launched our first product, you know, a couple of years research and design because I'd been tinkering away at it for quite a while. And we literally scoured the world looking for the most sustainable products. And we had a number of false starts. I think it's really important to note that we didn't, 
we weren't looking for a compostable solution. We were just looking for a better alternative. And compostable is where we landed at that point in time, knowing that there would be better solutions coming out in the marketplace. Uh, so we, you know, our original plan was that we were going to sell our packaging to really large, really large corporates. Uh, but what we did is we raised a Google AdWord uh, when we had ordered, we'd made a run. So what we did is we got, look, um, we've always had a really viral product and brand. And one of the things that was really important to us is we wanted to make something that was not only sustainable, but aesthetically pleasing as well. I think in the past, I'd always found sustainable products, you had to sacrifice the beauty of the product. And so we made our, our courier satchels matte black with really powerful messaging and it was really tongue in cheek. And they were a really beautiful design. And what we, we kind of didn't realize, we almost fell on it by accident, is that each one of those flyer, you know, each one of those courier satchels was acting as a flyer. And as we were selling them to our brands and the brands were sending them out and they were getting them to the hands of hundreds of thousands of people. And so it was kind of sending our message far and wide. And we got this really gorgeous organic viral growth that we still see today. You know, we've had so many businesses go, hey, I just received one of your bags. I'd love to learn more and I'd love to, you know, get involved. And so that really worked for us. And we always said from the early on that we would do what was right for our customers and for the environment. And so when we had brands wanting packaging from all around the world, we decided that we would say yes, because we wanted everyone to have access to sustainable packaging. And what resulted is in 52 countries, you know, we were shipping to 52 countries, which became a bit of a logistical nightmare really, really quickly. We wanted to keep our footprint down and we also wanted to keep our team down because that made the product more viable um, from a cost perspective. And so what we did is we used technology and outsourcing as much as possible. And we really, because I had that tech background, I was able to quickly get together you know, a tech stack that would support our international growth so that when our customers in the UK were purchasing, everything was automated and it would get shipped out pretty much while we slept and it just kept that support really low and that's enabled us to grow really super fast um, in, a, in a really sustainable and ethical way can you tell me who was your first customer oh such a good question so what we did is we um <laughs> we ran an ad word so we got some samples made uh, so it was about 50,000 bags and we were like let's just see if people are looking for this packaging and we ran and ran an ad word and well I ran the ad word and within minutes we were getting inquiries from customers and Kate called me up because we didn't have an office at that stage and she's like what have you done we're starting to get all these inquiries and I was like oh, I've placed an ad word and what we realized is that people were looking you know were looking for packaging uh, and sustainable packaging and you know we they were ready for it uh and so yeah we we doubled that next order and that sold out within weeks and we've just been hanging on for dear life ever since really so where did um, that person come is it from a new zealand uh a buyer the majority of our first customers were based in australia um through my last business i had quite a good connection there into australia um and so did kate that's where kate's uh, Dumbo Feather was based and we actually got into a really lovely pocket. There were a number of customers uh, in this one area uh, and it's quite a sustainable pocket in Australia and they sort of let each other know and they were all fashion brands like Spell and the Gypsy, um, Murray and Eve and there were, there were a number of them and they sort of all let each other know about the packaging and from that point uh, it just snowballed from there. Yeah, okay. and Australia is our, is our largest market, um, with the US being our fastest growing market. Awesome. So I wanted to ask you this. So Rebecca, the most packaging companies, right, they have a very large MOQ. Um, when you want to buy something, they put a minimum. Otherwise, it's harder to buy or it's really expensive. So when you started, did you have all of that, um, um, that kind of... Um, things going on or did you make it easier for people to purchase from you they could buy a minimum of five or six you know 
Yeah, look, that's a really great question. And that was something that we, we had to adapt to really quickly. So when we first started out, and as I mentioned before, we envisioned that we'd be selling to the really large corporates and units of a million. But when we placed that first Google AdWord, everyone who was coming through the sort of small to medium enterprises who didn't want to be buying a million bags for 500,000, we were looking at buying in units of 20 or 100. And so we made a really quick decision to create our own range, the better packaging range that we would sell via a website and uh, in really small units of over 25, I think we even go down to 15 in some products, you know, through to our hundreds and thousands. And we really thought that it was just going to be a value-add service for those customers. We didn't see it as a big part of our business. But by listening to our customers, we actually sort of absolutely stumbled on what would become the fastest growing part of our business. Yeah. Uh, and, and it now makes it about sort of 70 of all of our revenue. Awesome. And what did, website did you use? Shopify in the start? We started with WooCommerce. Um, so Kate did all of the website development, and then we've just recently moved to Shopify. Okay, yes. good. Yeah, Wait, so. Good. Sorry about that. You you were saying something? What was it? Oh, as the company's grown, we needed to evolve our tech stack. Okay. It's awesome that you started like a small WooCommerce and then you moved on because everyone normally starts with Shopify. So that's interesting. And also all your growth is based on your website. You had, you had no external partners, right? So what do you mean by external partners? Where you give your packaging and they resell it for you. Oh, we do have some resellers, um, and that's definitely a model that we're exploring at the moment and looking at, especially into those countries where we, we may not speak the language or, you know, the access is a bit tricky, uh, and that, yeah, that's something that we're definitely spending some time on at the moment. Awesome. Is it 100, is your packaging 100% made in New Zealand? No, it's the majority of our packaging is made in Asia. Uh, we do have some that's made, the, some of the labels are made in Australia, but we source our packaging from all around the world uh, and we're just looking for the most sustainable products. So in time, our plan is to source the resources as close to location of where we're selling it as possible and do the manufacturing as close to location. Uh, and that's, that's part of the plan that we're working on at the moment because that is obviously the most sustainable way to operate. Awesome. So how do you um, sell it out to your customers? Do you, does it come to the warehouse in New Zealand and then you post it? Or yeah, is it... We have, we have warehousing in five, soon to be six locations in the world. So we've, and that service about 80% of the market. Uh, so we've got China, the US, the UK, New Zealand, Australia, and we're just about to set up in the Netherlands. And we're also looking at Canada, potentially in the new year. And even if those we're also looking at South America at the moment as well. And that just helps to service sustainably as many locations as possible because we're really trying to reduce the amount of shipping that we do. Awesome. All right. So tell us about your company's re revenue projection for the year. So it's been doing really well. You've just get um, received the uh, Cartier Women's Initiative Award. You're the first TV entrepreneur to get that prize congratulations and so the, the, the company looks like it's you know going in the right direction so what is the plan so are you going to put it public in the share market or is it going to be privately held how is yeah, how is it? i'll never say never to anything we have we don't really have plans to list it at this stage uh we we are looking for another round of investment that we will we're just starting to get ready for now you know, we want to become the leading supplier of sustainable packaging globally. And uh, we, you know, we're seeing 200% growth year on year, and we're tracking for that growth again this year. And to do that, um, to continue to keep that growth up, we are going to need investment and support to do that. We have a number of new products launching in the, in the coming months, which I really believe are going to change the face of packaging. Uh, so we're super excited about that. Uh, yeah, and we just want to keep, you know, operating in an ethical and sustainable way. You know, not only providing innovative products, but, you know, continuing communicating and educating around sustainability 
uh, and also looking at the way our systems are created, you know, rethinking the way that we use packaging. You know, do you actually need that that item, or can you take two pieces of packaging and then replace it with just one? And so that's a part of the work that we're looking at. And then also ways that we can reuse our packaging. So you might receive your courier satchel, and we've you know, for Christmas, we've created bags that can double as wrapping paper, so they look like Christmas mailers. We've also got a courier satchel that you can turn into a tote bag, and we call it totally reusable. So just making people think about what they're receiving and what it can, what we can do with it at, before the end of its life and, and giving it another life. So that's a big part of what we're doing as well. Okay, great. Kate, uh, how, uh, sorry, Rebecca, how does uh, a traditional company, a traditional business like yours get funding? Because for IT companies, they have Series A and Series B. And how, does, how, do, how do you look for investors? Well, look, we've had so many people talk to us about wanting to invest to the point where we created a really large spreadsheet of what we wanted in an investor. <laughs> Uh, and so we listed all of the qualities that we wanted and probably the most important quality to, quality to us in the early days was that values alignment and making sure that they had the same values and that they would help us protect the mission because we didn't want to bring anyone in who would take the company and then turn it into something else or with different values than what we had. So that was really key to us. As we go for these, this next round, we're, we're looking for a, a more of a strategic investor. And while the values are still going to be the number one, uh, some of the other qualities that those investors might bring will, will help work out who that perfect investor is. But you, it's a partnership at the end of the day. And so you do have to get on and agree with those investors and we've been incredibly lucky today with our investors uh, they're amazing and so supportive and have really been a part of our growth and, and that's that's a perfect synergy right there yeah so how i don't think the business has been dented in any way because of covid right it looks like it's pretty yeah look it's it's impacted every part of our business from our supply chain uh manufacturing everyone knows how impossible it is to ship anything at the moment so we've definitely faced those challenges but from a customers wanting the product and from a sales perspective i think it's only helped to accelerate it because covid has really pushed e-commerce uh, and the direction it was going, but it's accelerated that growth. In Australia, uh, the career companies are shifting volumes every month like they, they did pre-Christmas. And so I think it just talks to the scale that people are now starting to shop online and, and we've been able to support it with sustainable packaging. Great, awesome. So um, do you have competitors in New Zealand itself? Yeah, absolutely. We've got competitors everywhere in the world, uh, and we've got we've got competitors in our space in the sustainable packaging space, and then we also think of plastic as a competitor too. So virgin plastic. So we quite often come up against that, especially because of the price difference. But look, we we love competitors. We think the more people who are doing what we're doing, good on them, as long as they're doing it to the same standards and with the same values as we are because the more packaging companies that are selling sustainable products, the better off they're going to be. So the, the people we really we really want to compete with are those virgin providers and really just challenge them and challenge companies to get alternatives. Awesome. Okay. And that is all the time that we have for today. We have just been speaking to Rebecca First, Kaski. I hope I got that right this time. The director and co founder of Better Packaging. Thank you, Rebecca, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's been really oh. fun. Awesome. Thank you so much. The pleasure is all ours. Be sure to join us next week as we aim to interview another awesome entrepreneur from across the Tasman. Thank you very much.